to welcome in in studio executive VP of the Commonwealth Foundation and fellow at Independent Women's Forum, Jennifer Stefano. Jennifer, good morning. Good morning, Alison. So Elsie. great to have you. Thank you for having me yeah, here. Yeah, of course. So the markets, uh, they started off the week with a bang. What, what's got investors so pumped up? I think that they're coming off of good earning reports and, and some excitement about that. I also think there was some bullishness um, in something the Fed said about potentially calibrating rate increases, but I, yeah. I think um, it would be irrational exuberance to think that this was any kind of turnaround. Yeah, let's run through um, the big earnings reports for the week. So Bank of America beat expectations uh, in the third quarter. Another big bank, Goldman Sachs, announcing its earnings today. What do you expect from the report and what indicators will it have on the economy as a whole, you think? Yeah, I don't think the earnings reports are exactly the, the right thing to look at to determine whether or not we're going to head into recession territory. As we know, um, Jamie Dimon has already said that, that he sees this economy going south, continuing to go south. I think first and foremost, it's how Americans look at themselves, look at their own economic outlook. And I think you look at any of the consumer sentiment indexes, you're seeing that there's a continued negative trend downward yeah. about the prospects for the country. Yeah, let's talk about these recession fears because the new probability models are out, right? And they're showing a recession could take place in the next 12 months. You speak to some people that say, we're in a recession. Right. Uh, you, and so I think people are confused. Are we in one? Are we going in one? The administration says, well, we could be heading into a slight recession. They also say the economy is, is doing good. I mean, people are confused, but you're right. I think they really see it in their bank accounts. Right. I think, it, look, when your wages look like they're going up and are going up, but you're able to purchase less, they call it the big Mac indicator, right? How many Big Macs can you purchase now versus a year ago? Right. That is a recession in people's mind, and that is as potent and politically damaging, frankly, as any economic indicator that we could look at. So you really have to look at it two ways. First, there's the, the economic indicators that have always been used by economists, and we can all debate about whether they are or not saying there's a recession. There's also the American public and how they're viewing things, right. and I think that's very different. Yeah, we've got home heating oil that's supposed to go up, right. too, and people, you know, they go to the grocery store stores, they're spending a lot more money than yes. they did a year ago. And speaking of grocery stores, so a supermarket merger is on the table. So Kroger is announcing it's buying um, Albertsons in nearly a $25 billion deal. So this is going to be the largest supermarket chain in the country. What does this mean for consumers? Well, it, look, it, it's possible that they could create efficiencies and they could lower prices, but oftentimes what's going to happen is that it'll reduce competition in the marketplace. And by reducing competition in the marketplace, you're going to have increased costs. Now, right. why are they doing this? Because they're scared of the Aldi's and, and the other discount retailers. They're afraid of the Walmarts and the mm -hmm. Costco's. So I think they're going to try to make their business model reduce prices, but that's a crowded marketplace right now. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so one marketplace that, that's been crowded and difficult is buying cars. So my daughter just turned 16, she got her license and we're looking, I know, we're looking for, A, you can't find a car, a used car, yeah. and B, the prices are so high. But good news that they're saying that um, inventory could come back and uh, prices could go down. This yes. is good. Yes. Well, so first, I think we should absolutely, now that my children are getting older, yeah. no one should be driving at 16. 36, <laughs> maybe. That's but true. 60, yeah. When did that happen? I know, right? I know. But, but um, in terms of car prices, it, nothing is going to happen in the in the immediate future. These prices are still going to remain very high. Most people, if you could continue to drive the car yeah. you have, drive it as long as you can. If it's if it's a, a car for a kid, this is the best thing to do is try short term leases right. just to get through through the next year and let's see what the inventory looks like as it comes back. Yeah, the and then you have to get a car loan. The yes. rates are, are higher uh, than they were. Yeah. So yeah, I know I, it does help me though if she can drive yeah. and she can go everywhere she needs. So I don't get the kids from, you know, right. from practice. Oh, I got oh, it. We're over. Yes. Yes. Um, I wanted to move on to Apple. So mm -hmm. they announced their um, their lineup to consumers last month, but they're already thinking ahead of what their next uh, product will be. Something that we've been seeing is Samsung has this foldable phone. I saw a commercial for it yesterday, but there's rumors that uh, Apple's going to just forget that trend and right. move forward. Right. Well, now they're saying, hey, we're not going to do that. We're going to do a, maybe a foldable iPad. Yeah. And, and I remember when Apple was the most innovative, um, forward-thinking tech company in the marketplace, right? I, th there's nothing particularly innovative about a flip phone right. or a flip iPad. And I think where Apple's beginning to lose its edge is it's really not bringing something new mm. and exciting and innovative. It's not changing the game. It's not changing the dynamic. And this is the perfect time for some small, scrappy startup, some yeah. kid working in their garage right? for her to bring forward a great 
great new idea and innovation. Do you remember years ago when they would come out with their new phone and people would stand in line yes. for hours and hours just to get their new right. phone? Now I feel like it's every year there's a new yeah. phone, so it's not a big deal. And th up upwards now of thousands of dollars, right? Well over a thousand dollars. And not that phone. different from what it was 10 years no, ago. It's, it's not that different. <laughs> All right, I do want to move on. This is my favorite story. I don't know, if you were a kid, did you ever go to Toys R Us? Did I? Yeah, yeah I mean, right? Course. That was like yes. the best. It was like a kid in a candy store. So mm -hmm. Toys R Us, remember, I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. So they are going to be opening 451 stores inside current Macy's locations ahead of the holiday season. I think this is great. My kids have never really been in a Toys R Us before, so this is great. Right, oh, well, first of all, I could do the whole dance for the song, the yeah. Toys R Us kids. Jeffrey, Jeffrey yeah, the Giraffe. Jeffrey the Giraffe, right? <laughs> And you'd walk in and there'd be a massive one and you'd go and you'd plead yes. with your parents and they were just getting a birthday gift for the little birthday party mm -hmm. to go to. Look, I, I think it's great. Any Anything nostalgic tends to do very well in marketing. Anything that evokes memories. And guess what generation is incredibly popular and hip? It's, it's Gen X, yeah. right? It's the 80s, 90s kids. So I, I think the idea of bringing this back, I think if they hook into nostalgia on the marketing and branding and they're already in a place that's heavily mm -hmm. tracked, uh, has heavy traction, like in Macy's, I think this can be helpful. I think it's great. I'm yeah. taking my kids there. Yeah. So the economy me, obviously this is top of mind. This is top of mind for voters. And I want you to take a look, um, according to recent polls, including this one, which asked potential voters how much President Biden is responsible for the economy. 45%, Jennifer said, a lot. I want to get your thoughts on this. I actually thought that it would be higher than 45% at this point. Yeah, well, I mean, look, if you can find the people that think he's somewhat right. to blame and a lot to blame, this is the vast majority of Americans here. And I think that's correct. Um, even under President Trump, obviously before COVID hit, Americans were doing better than they had ever done in the history of the country. And coming out of COVID, there was a sense of recovery, right? Even before the mm -hmm. vaccines came into play, I think President Obama has promised a lot, but excuse me, President Biden mm -hmm. had promised a lot, but it, it hasn't been delivered upon. And, and the Inflation Reduction Act didn't, right? It didn't right. do it. Build it, back better? Didn't do it. It didn't. And I heard over the weekend somebody from the administration was asked about this Inflation Reduction Act. And she said, well, eventually people will be able to get, you know, rebates. So they'll be able to get money back if they weatherize their home. Jennifer, to put new windows in your house, that costs Fortune. thousands of dollars. Or to buy an electric car. So this isn't money that people have in their bank accounts right now to do this. And it's sending us uh, billions and billions of dollars into debt. It's not helping people put food on the table today. It is not helping people who are already stretching their paychecks, right? So wages have gone up, but inflation has eaten into it far more, right? right. The wages went up about three grand. Inflation ate into it by about five grand in a year. That that gives people, it's a net negative, right? Of $2,000, And so you have a real problem here that the American people feel that strain and no big, um, tax and spend bills changing right. that. Yeah, and so a lot of people, um, people say that they don't feel the Democrats are prioritizing the economy. Um, they say that, you know, they're fifth on sixth on the list. Uh, voters, you know, they feel frustrated and they feel that Democrats need to focus, you know, more on the economy. Even Bernie Sanders came out and said, you know, Democrats need to focus on more than just, you know, abortion. They have to focus on the economy. Um, and even the New York Times acknowledging the GOP is gaining um, an edge as voters worry about the economy. Uh, this is such a big deal. Do you think this is what's going to get people to the voting polls and maybe even have those independents go Republican? Absolutely. Look, there's just a poll out showing that independent women now are mm. leaning towards the GOP on economic issues. And that that is across the board, regardless of demographic, regardless of political party, the top three issues for voters are the economy, uh, inflation and prices, taxes and spending, and then um, the growth of opportunity in the country. Following up on that are crime and education. And what have Democrats fallen short on? Right. D they're the defund the police party, right? Not the Republicans. On education, the Republicans have been heroes to many parents. And so the Democrats also lost that. They're focused on woke politics, abortion, mm -hmm. and, and, and they're not getting out ahead of what people really care about. Yeah, you mentioned woke politics. You mentioned crime. You're from Pennsylvania. Yes, so John Fetterman going against Dr. Oz. He's got these policies. He's very soft on crime policies. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing in, in the area that you're in? And what do people think of, of Fetterman. The fascinating thing in Pennsylvania is um, rural whites and urban blacks, they think the same thing, right? And John Fetterman thinks he's appealing to some um, 
working man and woman, some woke crowd. But um, across the board in Pennsylvania, um, you can see it amongst demographic groups, they are not buying into this. In fact, I went back, I get uh, John Fetterman's texts and I get his emails. He's not talking about the economy. Right. It's abortion. It's abortion. It's abortion. And then it's legalizing marijuana. Mm -hmm. Whether people do or don't agree with that, right. it's not feeding their family. It's not stopping the 15% growth in food prices. You right? think he, he's supposed to debate Dr. Oz on mm -hmm. the 25th of October. Do you think that's going to happen? Yeah, I do. You and do. I think Pennsylvanians wish him the best. I mean, I think sure. they hope for his recovery. He recently did an interview. I think what um, has to happen here is that Dr. Oz has to come out. If he wants to win this and continue to pull ahead of Fetterman, he has to show that he's America's most beloved doctor. Mm. He, he swung pretty yeah. hard politically, and I think that wouldn't be a mistake going into these debates. He's got to keep it focused yeah. on the economy with a nice bedside manner. Great advice. Jennifer Stefano, thank you so much for joining us today. Come back soon. Thank you, Allison. Of I sure. Course. All right.